Hey there guys, GMO73 here, back and bringing you another feature match for the week. Uh, this week I am playing, featuring some of the new rulers from Moonlit Savior. I am playing a green-white Kaguya 3 stun list uh, versus Luke Rawson, who is playing a black-blue-white primogenitor list. Um, pretty cool list, I met him at Shudokan, um, I really saw him playing at a tournament, I thought this was a fun list to get started with with Primo, so I thought you guys would enjoy it. So he's on the play, he's going to start with the Squadron of Dark Alice, uh, I'm going to get removed by Tsukiyomi Noble, he's going to pass the turn. So starting with that Moonshade, um, but because of Gagia, I can play it for free, or you can use the Moon to pay for green, so I don't have to burn myself. So I get that Moon Breeze Elf, and then as well play the Apollo Sphere. So he's going to use a Space Time Anomaly to kill my Moon Breeze Elf. He's not going to let me keep that on board. Uh, doesn't want me to ramp ahead of him. I have my Stone of Moonlight, so now I have two stones that I can tap for any color. He's deciding what he wants to try to do here. And in fact, he just go ahead and decides to um, do judgment. He's gonna go ahead and go early and try to put pressure on me as fast as possible. So he's gonna get to search his deck for a pitch black moon and put it straight into the field, which means his premium generator is now a 14 14. Uh, but then he has to pass turn because he doesn't have any way to give it swiftness or anything. No Levitines in the list. I'm gonna pay three to give myself a Tsukiyomi Noble. We do some rereading. Uh, I don't actually do the awakening here because um, I can't destroy his uh, pitch black moon because it is moon edition. Um, but I do have to pay 200 to burn myself to play the Tsukiyomi. I'm going to go ahead and use it so I can draw a card. And then I play a moon, uh, moon breeze elf with the other stone and set myself up to prepare for whatever you know he does next turn. He's trying to decide here what he wants to do. Now that I'm ahead on Will, he's going to decide whether he wants to keep swinging in and just use those two stones or try to get a little bit more Will. He does decide to tap. He's going to do uh, Space Time Collapse um, and send uh, and try to destroy my Apollo Sphere and my Tsukiyomi Noble. But I just use Apollo Sphere to bounce Tsukiyomi Noble back to my hand. So pretty good. Uh, he manages to get rid of one. But I can replay the Tsukiyomi in a bit. Plays a Cheshire Cat and I cancel it with the Wall of Wind that I have in my hand. Good thanks to Moon Breeze Elf. Going to pay one light and then a moon from Moon Breeze to play Lunar Abyss with the Awakening, which will then let me untap Moon Breeze Elf. Uh, and now it's a 5 5 flyer. I'm going to pay 400, take me down to 34, and I'll replay that Tsukiyomi Noble back to the field so I get to draw a card. Uh, and then I'll play a, use Moon Resolve to play a Familiar Holy Wind to draw a card, and I get another Apollo Sphere. So I feel pretty good here. Uh, I get to kind of re, you know, reestablish. And then between the priority sequence between. Uh, untap and main phase, I'm going to use Shining Strike and tap down his primogenitor. So I get to draw a card, tap it down, and now he can't tap for a stone, he can't swing at me for the turn. Um, that's a pretty good way, this is part of the stun part, if they flip too soon you just keep their Jade Ruler locked down uh, so they can't do anything. So Luke's going to play that Demonic Commander and then pass the turn, probably you know, having a flyer to be able to deal with my Lunar Ibis is pretty helpful. Deciding at this point whether or not I want to do judgment. So pay two, 
and I pay play the uh, Light Moon from the set, which lets me draw a card. Now all of my Awakening creatures have an extra 200-200 power. Um, so I'm going to start swinging in here. Seven hundred from the Ibis. It's gonna take it. Go down to thirty-three. Another seven hundred from Sukiyomi Noble. It's gonna take that as well. Taking him down to twenty-six. Luffy's kind enough there to let me tap for a stone even though I messed it up. So technically normally I would just be out of luck and I wouldn't have that stone. Uh, and I do it again to what I did before to him last turn with that shining strike. So between the untap and the um, actual main phase, I just shining strike his premium generator to tap him down. So again, I'm locking him into that three stones, which is pretty good. He's gonna swing with Demonic Commander. I'm gonna take the uh, 600 damage and I'm gonna discard that um, Sign of the Future. Sign of the Future isn't really helpful right now. I've got way more Resonators than him. Um, so it's a free, essentially just a free way to get rid of a dead card. So it passes the turn to me. I'm going to play a second moon, so now all of my stuff is even larger. Attempt to swing for nine. He allows me to do that damage. It's going down to 17. Uh, attempt to swing for another nine. He's going to try to stoning to death it. I'm going to bounce it back to my hands. And then just replay it. Get to draw another card. Tapping for stone early. Out comes the Tsukiyomi Noble. Get to draw another card. And then I can even play that other Apollo Sphere that I have in my hand. So I essentially just came back to the same position I was in before. Trying to see whether or not I want to play that Wall of Wind or swing in, or sorry, swing in with the familiar. That not like set up the Wall of Wind or whatever. So it goes down to 15. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. Um, between recovery and untap, I'm going to use the Moon of Activate ability to try to tap him down. Now what he could do here is he could use spend the one Moon from his Stone to be able to uh, prevent that. Um, but that would mean that he's you know he's still going to be at only three will for the turn if he taps for Stone. So I'm pretty happy about that because of the fact that I can just. Um, Because of the fact that I can, uh, you know, still slow him down significantly, so that even if he taps for stone and doesn't attack, I get to play that that other stone. Um, he, I think he accidentally tapped on too many stones there. Uh, gonna swing with the demonic commander. I'm gonna go ahead and just take the damage and discard another f sign of the future. It's really not doing anything for me right now. Tap for a stone. Out comes another familiar holy wind, so I can draw a card. Another a third moon, so I get to put just a lot of pressure on at this point. Um, swinging in for 11 with the lunar ibis. She has no way to respond to, so he's just gonna take the damage. Swinging with familiar holy wind puts him down to 200. And then tapping for another stone. 
And I want to try to tap him down, but I do have that wolf in the moonlight. I could play that and have it awaken to have a large creature to, to be able to block with. But I'm going to try one more time to, can't, to lock him down. And again, he chooses not to cancel it. So at this point, he's just got to decide whether or not he can do anything successfully with only three will. And I think he just decides at this point that there's really no way for him to reestablish, so he's just going to go ahead and move to game two. So game two is going to be on the play for Luke again. If you're wondering about the new gloves, uh, I picked up. I decided I needed to go ahead and get some newer ones. The other ones were kind of dying, so now we have gloves that match the color scheme of the channel. So, in case you were wondering. So again, he gets that blue black stone to start and starts with the Cheshire Cat. I get a Moonlight Stone, uh, and I decide to pass the turn. I could play um, the Apollo, but I don't want to give him something you know that's free to destroy. He's going to attempt to play Spiral of Despair. I'm going to Wall of Wind that, so I only technically have to discard the one card in the form of Wall of Wind. Self, I believe. And then I pass the turn, I think. Oh, I played the Apollo Sphere as well. Hmm. Oh. Because I have two options here. I can either play the Apollo Sphere and leave it up so that I um, leave the stone up so that I can you know, float some will or do something else. Um, but I also know that he has those space time collapses and I don't really want to get hit with one of those again. So he's probably not gonna play it if I just have the one creature. So he, you know, it would be a one for one, but it's not instant speed. So it'll, you know, spend a lot of will just to hit something, just to hit a little floater. Decides to go ahead and play the spiral. Uh, at that point, there's really nothing I can do. I don't have any more cancels. So I'm gonna discard Kagi's Premonition. And I'm going to discard the Familiar of Holy Wind. I think I should have discarded the Apollo here. Um, I think that would have been the smarter call. Um, especially because of the fact that I, I want to try to... I'm running low on cards. Like Familiar of Holy Wind is how I keep card pressure going. Um, so... I'm going to do the Awakening for Moonlit the Wolf. In the moonlight, so now it's an 8-8 with target attack because it has an evil counter. And I put on put out the Apollo. So Luke's thinking here whether or not he wants to play passively or aggressively. You see he's got that Arthur in his hand as well as uh Stoning to Death, Dark Purge, stuff like that. So he could either play slower um you know more reactionary on my turn or he could uh try and get aggressive and put and just seal the game in um he does decide to go with the more passive reactionary route passes to me um i attempt to swing in for um eight i'm going to use um apollo to bounce the wolf back to my hand play another moon breeze elf and then reawaken my wolf. And at the end of the turn, 
he just goes ahead and does use another stoning to death on it so it definitely is gonna die So at this point, there's definitely, you know, the choice for Luke, um, already not this turn because he's tapped for stone, but like starting next turn, having five stones already, um, there's definitely the option of being able to flip. He knows that, um, <laughs> he knows that I could lock it down, yes, but still having six will and making it so I almost have to have an answer to him. Uh, every turn could be powerful and you can cancel activate abilities things like let me produce my moon and stuff like that if you're wondering about that money exchange I was you know selling some cards that weekend so so many moon breeze elves and nothing to do with them because I'm just sitting on a shining strike and a uh, sign of the future During the upkeep, he uses that space time anomaly to kill one of the elves and gets to draw a card. Space time anomaly is continuing and through this weekend continue to show that it is a phenomenal card. Um, it puts in a lot of work, it does a lot of damage, it, or it does a lot of impact to a creature. And the fact that you can use it twice and it draws itself, it draws a card is very, very good. So he's gonna use it again from the grave to hit another Moonbreeze elf. Like I said, you know, just puts all that pressure on. And he's going to go ahead and pay four. And now he's going to really try to lock in that damage. <laughs> We're just going to think about it. He decides to only play two or three and play another demonic commander. So moving into combat, I'm going to go ahead and shining strike down one of his demonic, the, the demonic commander that could attack and get to draw a card because I know that you know, he's probably not going to flip, at least anytime soon, and even if he did, there's really no point to locking him down. Play Lunar Ibis to try to un get some creatures on board. Still shitting on another Shining Strike, and a uh, Side of the Future. So it's not looking good for me this game. Um... Space time anomaly, you know, draws kills my Ibis instantly, gets him to draw a card. Plays the Arthur. Um, see, I get to. I'm trying to tap some stones here, but then I realize that I can recalculate, and I don't actually get to kill it. I don't actually get to use my. Um, Sign of the future because of the fact that uh, Dark Arthur is going to immediately kill his Cheshire Cat, which still only puts him at two resonators ahead of me. So, trying to realize the count there. So, that was actually a really smart, really nice play. Um, I can't block his demonic commanders because uh, they're flying. So, this is a really bad situation for me. I'm gonna go ahead and moving into combat at least tap down one of them so I can draw a card. Not the card I wanted to see, but I am gonna take uh, 600 or 800. I'm gonna discard the uh, Apollo that I just drew because at this point it really doesn't do much. Now here's the one thing. This is where he kind of messes up. So he's got clear pressure on me. He's got a clear way to establish. I've only got one card in hand. Uh, and I just, he plays another resonator which puts me up, so I get to use my sign of the future to get rid of the Arthur and one of his demonic commanders. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be enough to bring it back, just because I am top decking and he has cards galore. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Judgment. And then pass the turn.
gonna swing in with that demonic commander. I was thinking about it anyway. And I discard the Seal of Wind and Light, so now I have no cards in my hand. And I used, at this point, he does Judgment. So now he's got that Primogenitor flipped over. I'm gonna cancel his ability to search for a move with Kaguya. And he could just cancel it right back with his um, Primogenitor if he wants to, but there's really no point. It's already a 12-12, it's infinitely stronger than my Kagi it can be. Especially since I have no cards to be able to, you know, knowingly awaken. Try to play Tsukiyomi Noble, doesn't let me draw a card, but I can at least play it. And then... Um, with the awakening said so that Kaguya is now a little bit stronger. She's a 9-11. And then I pass the turn. And then here's just kind of the moment. I mean, I know I, I know I lost at this point, but this is the moment that I kind of just kind of joke around. Go ahead and tap for another stone. And then draw between the recovery and everything. I'm going to try to attempt God's Art. Knowing that it's just gonna get cancelled by Primogenitor, so I just pass the turn, or I just uh, pass the game over to him, and we're gonna go to game three. So, this is me uh, being silly here at the beginning because we were all, you know, having a good time and laughing it up. Um, I was joking that uh, my deck apologized for the hand that it gave me in game two. Um, so I actually just took a picture of, game, of the hand to show to Luke after the match. This was just a fun way to go, so my thought was like looking at what I had in my hand, it was like near perfect uh, for the setup. And yes, I know Kagi's on the wrong side. Um, we address that here in a little bit. So I'll play the Moon Resolve turn one. Attempts to play the Cheshire Cat, which gets Wall of Winded. Draw for turn, tap for another stone. See, I flip the Kagi back over. Get Lunar Ibis out there. And the Apollo. Pass the turn. So, this is like perfect for me. I get to do my aggression. I still have ways to save my stuff. Sukiyomi Noble to continue to draw cards and a Shining Strike. Um, to be able to deal with whatever he does. So he's going to try to do the... Uh, I'm going to use the will from Moonbreeze Elf to activate Apollo and bounce it back to my hand. I'm going to swing 5. He's going to take the 500 damage. I'm going to pay 2 for a Lunar Ibis and untap the Lunar Ibis and then swing in for another 500 damage. And then I'm going to... I think I passed the turn there, or do I play the Moon Freeze Elf? I go ahead and replay the Moon Breeze Elf, I think. Nope, I just... It's hard to design, because it's based on what he might do. You know, Shining Strike is a really powerful card, and the fact that I actually draw stuff, but if I play the Moon Breeze Elf, I can't use it, um, because I can't spend Moon on Light, I can only spend Moon on Wind. Um, but I go ahead and decide that trying to get ahead, way ahead in terms of curve is a better plan. Luke decides to use space time anomaly to kill one of my Ibis. Don't really have any way to protect it, so he's gonna get to draw a card. Passes the turn to me with only one stone up. Attempt to swing in five. That damage is going to go through. Down to 25. Play Wolf in the Moonlight with my Awakened. So now it's an 8 8. And then I pass the turn to him.
So, this is another moment where he has to decide whether he wants to try to put pressure or just have those spells handy. Uh, he does decide to keep those spells handy. Play the Apollo Sphere and attempt to swing in for five. Uh, he's going to use the Space Time Anomaly from the Grave to kill it. Uh, I'm going to bounce it back to my hand with the um, Apollo Sphere. He's going to stone it to death. My uh, Wolf probably should have done the opposite. Probably should have just let him kill the Ibis. But. Um, and kept the wolf alive, but that's okay because I can put Tsukiyomi Noble, and now I'm at a point where I have enough will to be able to hold on to that shining strike in my hand while also playing the Tsukiyomi Noble. So Luke decides to call for another stone. He's got that Arthur, he's got a space time anomaly, he's got some discard potential. Uh, he knows I has one stone up and only two cards in hand, so he's gonna try to. Let's do Spiral of Despair, um, which I'm going to go ahead and cancel by paying 200 life. Again, I want to hold on to that Shining Strike, and then he's going to try to play that Zamana Commander. So draw. Tapping for Stone. Luke is currently tapped out, which means I could put in a lot of pressure this turn. So he's going to go ahead and play that uh, Tsukiyomi Noble and draw a card. Which lets me draw into that moon. And I forget here to draw a card for the moon, um, which I should have done, which would have helped a lot. Um, I swing in for 700 damage with the Lunar Ibis. He decides not to. He decides to block it, and then I swing in for 700 damage with the um, Tsukiyomi Noble. Put again down to 18. He has that Arthur in hand. And he could back up that Arthur with the stoning to death, but he's got to make that decision whether or not he wants to make that play. He does, he plays the Arthur. I don't have a single way to cancel it. And then he now has backup to be able to play a spell if he needs to. I draw. During the draw step, I need to try to get that last little bit of damage in. So during the draw step, I'm gonna go ahead and do the Shining Strike on his uh, Arthur. So I'm gonna be able to swing in. Attempt to swing 500 and then an additional 500 to get him down to 8 and then attempt to swing in for the third 500 to put him down to 3 and he is going to go ahead and have a response to that you'll see in a second. Place the stoning to death. So Ibis is going to get killed. I'm feeling okay with that though, because I have some stuff in my hand. I feel like he's going to be able to make me, let me do some stuff. With so much will, I don't necessarily want to flip Kage right now. Um, I'm trying to decide whether or not flipping is a good option here. I do decide to call for another stone. In hindsight, I think that doing judgment at this point would have actually been pretty helpful. Um, even though I know he has the space-time anomalies and stuff, um, even just to bait out those anomalies and keep myself safe um, to be able to use my premonition, which is in my hand, and awaken it. Um, you know, if he, based on how he decides to play it out, I could easily just. Uh, I also would have, oh, I would have been just shy of having enough will for God's art, but. Um, I just would have been able to deal with what he plays, you know, a little bit stronger, a uh, bit of stronger position. He plays Lucifer. This is also where I mess up here. Um, so I sacrificed the, the Tsukiyomi Noble, which is fine. I needed to do that. Um, he goes to try to kill my other one with, my, with his Arthur. I should have tried to block here. I'm going to play Premonition to try to suck up all that damage into a giant Tsukiyomi Noble. Um, I should have tried to block, which would have probably forced him to do um, 
stunning to death on the elf, and then I could have used Tsukiyomi Noble, uh, the um, effect on um, Tsukiyomi Noble from Premonition to pump it up and swing in for game. Um, I didn't do that, so unfortunately, I think that move right there just cost me this game. So even though my pressure at the beginning of the game was perfect, the curve perfect, you know, it curved perfect um, in the terms of the cards, um, because of that little misplay right there, it just cost me the game. I go ahead and flip over Kaguya, do Judgment. And then I pass the turn. Between the recovery and the main phase, I'm going to go ahead and God's Art. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, the other option would have been to play that um, pr the magician that I have in my hand uh, to get the awakening to be able to. Um, To be able to um, make it so the space time anomaly wouldn't kill me, the two space time anomalies wouldn't kill me. Uh, didn't didn't go for that. Went for the um, went for the judgment play instead. I had the life to be able to survive, so it really would have been just way smarter. Um, he does have three space time anomalies though, so really it wouldn't have mattered. He would have just used all three. Um, and at this point, I'm going to try to swing in for one. It's going to use the space-time anomaly to kill it. Swing in for zero, technically, because it doesn't have you to have any attack. Uh, and he knows that I just have a um, Sand of the Future in my hand. So, really nothing I'm going to do. So, I'm going to let him take one more turn. Uh, and I'm just going to swing. So, what you see me do here is I'm, I just tell him, it's like, why don't we just end it? I'll just reveal the top card of my deck and then just skip the match. Because he's definitely got it in the bag at this point. Being able to lifelink with the, because um, you can lifelink with um, Lucifer and start gaining life back. So there's really no way for me to recover the pressure because Lucifer's an 11 11. So he's just going to gain all that will. So I show him the two sign of the futures. Um, and then I just say, well, let me just, I'll just reveal the top card and we could just be done. So I reveal. It is a familiar holy one that I would reveal and I just scoop the match. So there you have it guys, let me know what you think, deck profiles up this Saturday as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, this is TMO73, signing off.